Oh, the Phoenix Mercury. They used to have a clown coach. Now they're a clown college, it appears. Unbelievable. Now, if you're not aware, they just got themselves a new coach, Nate Tibbetts, and have pissed a lot of people off. And we are going to go through this. Now, to start with, if you're not aware, Matt Ishbia took over the ownership of the Suns and Mercury. He actually officially took power around the 7th of February, 2023. Now, initially, I didn't know if Ishbia even gave a damn about the Mercury because I sure as hell didn't think so because he let that four-team awful deal they did with uh, Chicago, Dallas, and New York go through where for some reason the Mercury gave up a pick swap to New York in 2024, which might be a pretty damn good draft if Caitlin Clark and uh, Beckers go back for a fifth year. Just crazy stuff. So I didn't think he gave a crap, but who knew? He actually did. He went to one of the games on the 21st of June where they took on the Aces and he spoke and then the uh, Mercury went on the road and got crushed or by the Seattle Storm, and and that was just too much for him to take. So he decided to go ahead and fire Coach Clown, and they inserted Nikki Blue as coach. And to be fair, she, she didn't do a bad job. She did better than Coach Clown. They sort of came together, won a few games, and, and in July it went unnoticed, but uh, Jim Pittman, who made that disastrous trade and gave to Rossi the max contract deal, he, he decided not to return. They've moved him, I think, to uh, CFO or something. They've moved him upstairs, basically kicked him upstairs. And then Ishbia went and got himself a GM. Of course, he went to the Warriors to find a GM, hoping some of that Warriors would rub off on him. So he hired Nick Uren, who was the director of basketball operations for the Warriors. And then another good move in early October the Mercury announced they're building a separate practice facility. So it seems like Ishby is all in because they're going to spend like $100 million on this practice facility. And here we go. But then they took one hell of a misstep. So here we go. The major misstep. So Yurin decided he needs a new coach and he goes out and he hires Nate Tibbetts. And, and you might say, wow, Tibbetts has 18 years of pro basketball coaching experience, including 12 years as an NBA assistant coach with the Orlando Magic. He also was with the Portland Trail Blazers and Cleveland Cavaliers, and as well was six years in the G League as a head coach for Tulsa and Sioux Falls. I am sure Yuren and Ishbia are high-fiving each other and saying, we did it, look what we got here. We're going to be like the aces of the South We've got NBA experience and we're going to crush it. Little did they know they were going to piss off the WNBA world. First of all, they announced this coaching hire on the Wednesday prior to game four of the WNBA finals. I mean, hell, even baseball, they try to avoid making, you know, manager announcements during that part. So that's strike one. Strike two, I don't know if they just had a goddamn blind spot or what, but they didn't seem to understand the issue they were going to have that this guy had never coached women before. I don't know if they didn't know they were going to take heat on this or just didn't understand the amount of heat they were going to take on it. But and, and then they put in like the press release mentioning that he was a girl dad, and then they went on and on about how his old man Fred had coached um, the high school women's basketball team and won like 12 state championships. And he learned so much watching the respect his dad had for women. And that was what's making him qualified to coach women. And hell, he might turn into a hell of a coach, but this is an unbelievable kick in the guts to the WNBA players and coaches because... No woman is getting an NBA coaching job. I mean, hell, Hammond maybe got a courtesy look for the Toronto job, but nobody is doing that. So there, there are really 42 pro coaching jobs out there, 30 for the NBA and 12 for the WNBA. And you're going to give one of these positions away to somebody that hasn't had any experience at all 
with coaching women. I mean, it's just unbelievable. They won't do it the reverse side. It, it's just crazy. No wonder Muffet McGraw came out and just saying, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, her quote is great. Let's read this. Breaking news. White man hires white man to coach WNBA team and makes him the highest paid coach in the league. Gender bias is real. <laughs> and she's right. And then the players aren't real pleased either. Nafisa, well, let's, let's go back a bit. When Becky Hammond got paid a million i mean there was you know you mostly celebration for that because a woman was breaking through and getting a high salary the only one that had something to say was liz cambage and hell she was probably pissed off that hammond didn't re-sign her back to the aces so she had a few bitter words or, or basically pointed out how ridiculous it was that the coach was getting paid four times the amount of the highest paid player well this time after uh tibbets got his Nafisa Collier, who says nothing usually, she even came out and said, man, this is really disappointing. What's going on with this? And then from a business standpoint, uh, it just makes no sense whatsoever. The The Mercury are going to be crappy next year. There's just no way around it. You've, you've got Tarasi on a max contract. They're a team that is going through or going to have a rebuild. So why pay a million dollars to a coach when you're always complaining about salaries? You know, why not just extend blue for another year? And and then my God, if, if you really need that, um, you know, what I call the bill, you know, P next to bill Belichick, my God, how many coaches got jobs in the NFL? Cause they peed next to bill Belichick and they were all terrible. Hell, my Houston Texans probably got the best one, which was Bill O'Brien. He was just barely over 500. God, he was awful as a GM. But just because they were next to Bill Belichick, they all got jobs, and they were terrible. And I think this is the same way with your rent. Oh, my God, we need somebody that's peed in an NBA locker room because that will give the magic touch. So, my God, if, if, if that's what you need, then sure, have it up your sleeve. Go ahead. Let, let Blue take the next year of the rebuilding project. And then if you need that WNBA, you know, that NBA push, why not bring in Lindsay Harding? She just took a G League coaching job. She could coach that next year. And then you can go to her and say, hey, come over here. We'll, we'll give you a pay rise and you can take over. And, you know, she would have that NBA, so important NBA experience. Plus, she would have run a G League team. So she would have it all. Instead, you decide to take this PR hit and nightmare on this, which is ultimately going to be a crappy season next year, and you're just going to take incoming from all sides on on, on this coach. She's not going to have success because you're rebuilding, and then everybody's going to be pissed off on why you hired a man. And then the opposite side of this. Let's say this guy's a goddamn genius, and somehow he does have unbelievable success next year. What do you think he's going to do? The first job offer he gets to go to the NBA or hell, even maybe a good college job, he is going to leave. He's not at the WNBA for the long term. That's why if you're a WNBA team, you, you've got two options. One, you should hire a woman because you have more chance to keep to keep her. And, and the only competition is from college basketball. Or you need to go like the uh, Sparks did. You can hire a man, but they need to be gay, <laughs> like Kurt Miller, because uh, it'd be a, a interesting concept. What what would the NBA players hate more, a female coach or a gay man? I suspect it would be a gay man, as homophobic as the NBA is. Didn't the WNBA learn anything from James Wade? Hell. He was going to be in Chicago for life. Don't you remember? He was hoping there'd be a sandwich named after him one day. Yeah, watch that video. It's unbelievable. What a rat. He trades away their future and then scurries out in the middle of the season to be an assistant coach in Toronto. Anyway, would love to get your thoughts and poison. Do you think this was a ridiculous hire and worth all the outrage? Or is it us just being overprotective and, you know, he was the best man for the job and he should get it. I think it was a stupid hire. It's a waste of money. And I understand why Muffet McGraw and others are pissed off as this is a punch in the guts. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope to see you next time. Good night.